Hi, my name's Ken. I'm from Traverse City, Michigan, and you're watching TJV. Good the morning, humans. How's it going? We're here at this uh, residential lumber yard that we were talking about yesterday. Diesel, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I don't think we should be here, man. Uh, I don't think we should be here either. Who puts a lumber yard in the like dead center of a residential zone? Like, I'm not thinking. I'm not telling you like it's. It's not like on the edge. No, it's in the heart of a residential zone. And no, they don't got any truck routes leading to it. They just got these tiny little residential streets where you have to run the curbs to get in here. Like I went past it the first time because I thought it was a house, like I was saying in yesterday's vlog. And then I called them and I'm like, where are you? I'm like, how am I supposed to get in there? Like, yeah, we know it's tight. I'm like, that's not tight, that's ridiculous. <laughs> You need a, a yard sort of in, on the outskirts of town, not in the heart of the old downtown. But oh well, it is what it is. Here we are, we're gonna unload it from here. We head to Joliet, Illinois. I'm still not sure what we're picking up or where it's going, but we're going to Joliet, Illinois after this to pick it up. First, we have to get unloaded. See, like they got homes and a, a park, a play structure here, right next to the lumber yard. That's hilarious. Here's my... Uh, Here's my load. I don't want to unstrap it yet because I don't know if it's going to get me to move from here. Because this doesn't seem like this would be a place to unload lumber. But uh, apparently it is. Apparently it is. My next load, he asked if I had uh, eight foot tarps, which I do right here. So uh, I'm guessing that that means my next delivery is going to require tarps. Goody. I hear it's attached to a few pretty pennies though, so I guess we'll forgive them. We're in the town of Hobart, Indiana. That's where we're unloading. So if you guys are familiar with this town, you probably know how strange it is that they have a lumber yard in this neighborhood. Very odd. At least they have this like little turnaround area here for us, like right where that guy's unloading there. But that's just a residential street right there. We're just unloading right on the street. I don't mind it. I mean, I can do it. If if, the, if this guy can get in here, I can get in here. And if I can drive in here, I can get out of here. I'm not worried about that. I'm just saying it's odd. And I wouldn't like it very much if I lived in these homes here. Like when I go home, I want it to be peace and quiet. I don't. I want to get away from work and all the noise of work when I go home. That's why I wouldn't buy a house near an industrial or commercial area or a city. I shouldn't say that. I, who knows what life will bring? I'm not against living in a city. I just much rather prefer living way out in the bush away from all civilization where I can do anything I want. Almost. I mean, by that I mean like I could run through my yard naked. No one would ever know. Sorry to put that image in your mind, but you'll never know if I do it or not. You, you never, I might do it all the time. You, you wouldn't know. That's the kind of property I like to have. Just skimming through the south side of Chicago here, getting over to Joliet. So the the load is going to High River, Alberta, which is way up by uh, the boundary with Northwest Territories, up in northern Alberta. I've only been up that far north once. I went to Hay River, Northwest Territories, when I was on dry van, delivered some stuff up there. Now I'm going to be delivering. I, I have no idea what I'm picking up yet. No idea. All I know is I've got to tarp it and I've got to be there. 
uh, in less than an hour and I've got 30 miles to go, 50 kilometers. So I should get there, no problem, even a little earlier. I'll figure out what it is that I'm loading. Hopefully it's not too complicated. It's got some shiny pennies attached to it, so I'm guessing it's not gonna be the most simple freight. But hey, maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. It'll be simple, easy freight to tie down, but maybe it'll just be very fragile or valuable. I don't know. Either way, it'll be a good load for me. It's 3,400 kilometers, the load. That's three and a half days of driving, so that would be, uh, what? 12, 18, about 2,000 miles? A little over 2,000 miles, because 2,000 miles is 3,000 kilometers. So actually 400 kilometers in four hours. I'm doing math in my head right now, it hurts. 20, actually 240 miles, so about 2,250 miles. That's my best guess. That's the entire load start to finish. Just hoping that we're not gonna run into some kind of big traffic congestion here already pretty busy but I can't really afford to be late they're very very picky here with their shipping and loading appointments if I don't make it I don't think they're gonna load me I don't know what would happen because somebody's got a they still got to ship it I don't know they might just load me tomorrow then they wouldn't be happy maybe they would give us a fine I don't know I don't want to find out well they're loading me inside but this is a different kind of dock, I guess you'd call it. Look how tight it is in here. I can't even strap down my load in here. I'll have to pull it out. This side is the same thing. I'll have to pull this whole load out of here. I ain't got a tarp it yet. Got some nice sharp edges at the top there, of course. Of course. Wouldn't be any fun without any sharp edges. And they also don't believe in air conditioning here. This whole building is just cooking. It's like an oven in here. A lot of stuff going on though. That guy's getting loaded. That loads a lot easier than mine. Tarped it outside here. I'm just starting to feel a few raindrops. Oh, that'd be great if it would rain. This was a mess. Mess of a load. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Literally just mix matched all over the place. Check this out. Look at that lob-sided weird load. It's all tied down under there, all tarped. It's going to high level Alberta. 3,500 kilometers. Guess we should giddy up and go. You know, on days like this, Sometimes, sometimes, on a day like this, I kind of think back to the days of swinging the doors on the dry van and just driving away with my load. Man, those were the good days. Didn't get paid as much then, though. So I guess, if you look at it that way, <laughs> These are the good days. <laughs> oh, I really didn't want to spend all day here, but here we are. You don't always get to do what you want to do. But like I was telling you before, there's a couple of shiny pennies somewhere in there attached to the load. I haven't found them yet, but maybe once we deliver them, they'll show up. Now we're going to try to get... Uh, all the way up to High River, Alberta. I think I'm gonna try and stop at home. I don't know when. Hey, how do I get out of here? Kind of flattering, they like me so much they locked me in. Or maybe I just took too long. I'm pretty sure if I drive up to it, it'll open. Excuse me. I'd like to go now. Excuse me. Ah, there you are. Gotta get pretty close to this one. I want a gate like this on my driveway at my house. Just big, big gate, over excessive, you know. All the neighbors will be wondering, what are they doing? Who are they? 
Wonder what they do in there. You'll never know, haha, <laughs> because I got a gate. Big gate. Have a safe trip, that sign says. Well, thank you. They're so nice. Hope I got everything, because, well, now that I'm out of there, I'm prob probably not going to be able to get back in there. Shades on because the sunshine is so good. It's too good for my eyes. We have five hours and 30 minutes available on our 14 hour day today. We'll see where we can make it to. The positive side of this is that this is a very light load. It's only like 2,000 pounds. It's like nothing. So fuel economy will be on our side. Okay, my GPS wants me to turn right. I mean, pardon me, left, but uh, the ditch in front of me says I should probably turn right. Excuse me, hey. Let me on the road. Thank you. Now, uh, do I do a U-turn here? Is that what I want to do? I'm going to do a U-turn. doesn't say no U-turns. I'm doing a U-turn. See, I can swing this thing around. It's not 40 acres, but I can turn it around, I think. Looks like a lot of other trucks have done it, looking at the pavement. There we go. One good thing about the Volvo is it can turn on a dime. Beautiful. Now that we're going the correct direction, if I hurry and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to get home tomorrow night for the night and then spend uh, Saturday morning, or the next morning there. I have to have this load in High River, Alberta by 2 p.m. Monday, mountain time. I can't be late or they won't unload me. One of those appointment times that's very strict. Have to be there at 2 p.m. No later, no earlier. 2 p.m. Monday. This is the end of the line for us today. We're at the petrol stopping center. I'd like to get a truck wash here tonight yet before going to bed. And uh, we're gonna sleep right here. Start tomorrow morning. Still have 3,242 kilometers to go. Turn right on Kinero. Still probably about 2,400 miles, 20 or 2,000 miles? No, more than that. 2,200 miles. At least we got a good place to stop here. And this truck desperately needs a wash. I really need to start washing it more often. I just I wish it didn't cost like it costs like 70 bucks. Petrol stopping centers on left. It costs like 70 bucks American, which is almost a hundred dollars Canadian to wash the truck, but I wish they'd come down on their price just a little bit at the blue beacon. We'll find ourselves a parking spot and I'll check in with you then. Well, we got a pretty good spot to park. And work's not over yet. I'll be here at this truck stop for about 12 hours, so I got some time to do so. It's a little bit extra. Other than that, yeah, we're gonna be here for uh, a little while yet. Tomorrow morning. Well, I'd like to stay here for about 12 hours, a little more than my 10 hours, and then tomorrow we'll get going. I, I might be able to get home tomorrow. If I don't get any delays and nothing goes wrong, I should be able to get home tomorrow night, spend the night at home, Saturday morning, and then Saturday noon, I can leave towards high level Alberta, and I should be able to get there still with plenty of time for my strict non-negotiable Monday 2 p.m. delivery appointment. Watch, I bet you anything when I get there at like 1.30 Monday afternoon, I, they probably aren't even gonna unload me until like 4.30. Guaranteed, it's, it's always when they make those like strict, strict appointments, those are the times where they're like super slack and super slow, right? <laughs> oh, I'll be there for two. I'll be there for 1.30 actually, half an hour early. Just because I'm hardcore like that. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching today. 
I'll see you tomorrow for another vlog. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. If you're watching this on BitChute, my main channel is on YouTube, but all of the content there is mirrored onto my TJV channel on BitChute. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you feel like it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Either way, if you leave a comment down below, the YouTube algorithms see that you're engaging with my content and they recommend it to more people. So either way, you're helping me out. So thanks in advance and I'll see you then. Then being tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hello, hello, it's Scott Jonasson from Red Lake, Ontario, Canada, hauling fuel in the Great White North. You're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. <laughs>